You ready? <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Filler Read Podcast, episode number nine. Um, this is the episode where Eric goes ahead and uh, very sexily takes off his clothes and starts modeling for you. I start stripping. Um, so I'm Nathan, and as always, I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Mr. Eric Jacobson. How are you today? Uh, it's raining, and it, it's kind of shitty. It is. Uh, uh, so, let, me, let me show you. That is, they probably can't see out there, but it is very wet and gross, and uh, springtime, so yeah, good stuff. Um, so we have a lot of things, actually, that are happening in the gaming news today that we'll uh, end up covering. Uh, first, uh, we'll just lead in with the typical um, conversation starter. What have you been playing this week, and do you like it? Uh, again, World of Warcraft. Um I, the wow grind. Yeah. Again. Um, I have so many characters that I can't decide who to like stick to, so um, I keep bouncing back and forth, and it's annoying and also just more fun. Like I'm having more fun just just doing whatever the fuck I want and not having to worry about like gearing and all that stuff. So. So are you like okay? So your typical day of WoW, right? What mm -hmm. does that consist of? Is is like because I have never played WoW, so is it like a PVE type of thing? Is it like a so, PvP? What do you what are you doing? First off, I have to start out going on my main character, uh, because there's this thing called the garrisons, which is like your home base. This was just released with an expansion, um, and you have to get like there's resources that you can collect there. So you just have to go and collect your resources, and you can put in like orders technically. Um, and that takes a while. And then, um, you also have these things called followers, which are like people that do missions for you and get you gold and gear and experience and stuff like that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, then from there, I'll just, I'll either go on a low level character and start leveling or I'll go, uh, do a raid of some sort. I usually don't PVP that much because I'm terrible and you have to either be really good or really geared to even PvP. So it's uh it's kind of it kind of sucks. Okay, so yeah. this is like like on a minor character, it's mostly just kind of a grind thing against like yeah. monsters or Mostly just yeah, it's just okay. questing. Um All right. so yeah. So uh I've been playing uh more Hearthstone, believe it or not. I've been trying to finish the campaign to GTA 5. Have you finished the campaign yet? I'm still where I was last week. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, I think I'm almost there. I think I've got about eight to nine missions left where if I really uh, grind it out, for lack of, lack of a better word, for like four or five hours, then I can definitely get it done, uh, mm -hmm. which I'm excited because uh, I'm actually a little bit invested into the story, and I think that it's a pretty compelling story just because the characters are so amazing. And yeah, the character so... development is really good. Yeah, so. super cool. Um, other than that, Hearthstone, GTA, I've been playing a little bit of League, which, um, I mean, speaking of a League, has, so the reason that you don't play much League anymore, I'm guessing, is not only because you got bored of it, but because your internet is still crappy, is that yeah. still, is that still a problem? Um, I figured out that the sole reason that it sucks is because my parents, um, don't know whether or not they're uploading all their files, uh, because, uh, believe it or not, our cloud computing hasn't gone to the point where you can just upload the files uh, that you just recently um, redid. So my dad and my mom both re-upload every single file they have like every week. And it's it just continuously happens. So I have to constantly be like, hey, can you, like even just before the podcast, the internet sucked. And I was like, hey, can you like make sure that you're not uploading or downloading anything? He's like, yeah. And then it was fine. So wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the thing, and <laughs> that you know, it's great. Back your data up. Uh, you don't want to lose all your family pictures from uh, National State Park, but for God's sakes, don't do it when your kid's trying to play World of Warcraft, because <laughs> your kid doesn't have any other friends to play with. So <laughs> he's just gonna play World of Warcraft. No, but that, I mean, the reason I quit League of Legends is, is mostly because I got bored. Um, it's still fun. Understood. I'm just, I'm just like, I, I go through phases. Like, I guarantee I, this is not the end for me. Like, I will go back and play 
for an extended period of time and then I'll quit again. It's just weird. Yeah. I'm no, weird I, with things. I totally get that. I think I think most people go through that to be honest. Um, like I've had like gaming phases since I can remember, ever since yeah. I picked up a uh, Game Boy. Um so that's totally cool. Uh, speaking of League of Legends, I guess we'll just head into our first piece of news. Um, there was a new League of Legends champ announced today, Mr. Mr. Echo, uh, in a video by Riot called Echo Second. You can go ahead and YouTube that. Uh, they, they, they showcased his, uh, well, not his kit in that video, but they later released um, a bunch of videos, which I can actually pull up here. And he looks like a really interesting either jungler or mid. I can't really definitively tell what he is exactly but probably both he's probably AP damage both. so at least for now he he looks ap um and that's important so yep uh shoot i'm trying to add the screen but he's okay. he's melee but he's also got a lot of mobility and a lot of utility so he seems to be overpowered like the, the kotaku article says new league of legends champion seems seriously overpowered so he, I actually disagree. I don't think he seems that overpowered, because um, in the video his his damage wasn't. He didn't seem to have a ton of damage. So let me just go through his abilities really quick, and then we'll sort of give our first impressions. So his passive is where, um, essentially, the more he keeps attacking and hitting spells on people, the more he sort of builds up damage on them, and then every third auto attack. Every third auto attack, he'll gain like a movement speed boost. So he's a little bit more okay. mobile, a little bit more agile, which is which is pretty interesting. Um, and that third attack will additionally slow them. Um, his Q is going to be his main attack, as Qs usually are, where he throws essentially like a like a big projectile, almost like an like a portable AOE spell, and that will slow yep. enemies to deal damage. Um, his W is. So it has a passive where his basic attacks deal additional damage. So um, that, to me, that says that he's an AP champion because they needed to buff his auto attacks a little bit. Uh -huh. And then his W is essentially a huge AOE stun, um, much like Victor's gravity field if you get caught in it. Really? Um, and then phase dive is sort of dash. And it says, once his initial dash has ended, he'll gain increased range on his next basic attack, and he'll blink to his target to yeah. deal damage. So again, very agile, very sort of slippery, almost like a Zed type of character. Uh -huh. Now his ultimate is... Um, so this was what I was most confused by. His ultimate has this little guy following him around once he starts moving here. And like I'm not sure if once you have your ultimate, that guy will always just like follow you, like like if that won't ever turn off. But basically if you press if you press your ultimate, you can then teleport back to that character and you will sort of stun enemies in a small AoE around where you just teleported. Oh weird. Yeah. yeah, so I just watched this video. Um he put it in mid lane backed and then immediately jumped to mid lane and got a turret so he put like it in mid lane Wait. yeah so oh so that's interesting because you can actually if you back fast enough you can actually have that character remain there yeah that's that's super interesting actually yeah kind so that's a, a that's a good use of it i suppose because yeah. if it just follows you around it slowly is going to walk back towards you yeah or if you teleport or something um so interesting character um like like i said like in in these videos he doesn't seem to be doing that much damage per se it looks like he's a very cc oriented character um which is again tells me that he's either a jungler mm -hmm. or a mid lane um and i mean obviously i haven't seen any videos or any sort of like pve type of gameplay but he looks almost like an Oriana character, I think, where he's pretty utility, kind of well, kind of like a cross between Oriana and Zed. He's very slippery, very CC oriented, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yeah, he looks fun um, and very good. I, I mean, he he doesn't look. I I don't know. Like like he's is he a little bit comparable comparable to leblanc right because leblanc has a good amount of cc and is slippery and does a lot of damage so I, I mean true. he has more cc the guy the video he's uh 15 and 4 so maybe he's just really good but he also <laughs> might just be really overpowered um 
I don't know. I mean, he's still in public beta right now. So, so there, he's subject to change. He's not. Yeah. It's not definitive as in like he's going to be really overpowered or really terrible. So I'm sure and, they'll balance him out um, at least a little bit. So on his his W gives that passive of having um, of having increased auto attack damage. His, his E gives you increased auto attack range, and his passive passive gives extra boost when you auto attack somebody. So he might even be an eighty AP, uh, like hybrid too. Something like somebody like a Kali or like Kale or okay. somebody. Okay. Yeah, is, that's fair enough. Because like he he would build off of attack speed, with his passive. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, Kale. He's very similar, except for um, more melee. Yeah. Um, CC. CC. Yeah. And I pers I mean, like, in terms of the cinematic, not that it matters, but I actually didn't really like the cinematic that much yeah. because. They kind of portrayed him as the sort of like character that fucks up and has to like rewind time yeah. to like do stuff again. Like yeah. I'd I'd rather have somebody be portrayed as like a strong, assertive character than like yeah. somebody who's like, oops, better rewind time, and then like <laughs> does the situation again. That's so true too. He like <laughs> he just seemed to be like, he and also he seemed to forget that he could rewind time every time. He'd like fuck up, be like, oh I'm screwed. Oh wait, and then rewind time. <laughs> It was, it, was yeah. just, it was kind of poorly put together. But, I mean, whatever. He's Yeah. He's, it's not a lore-driven game. So. No, no. Um, I mean, honestly, this guy could be, like, a walking broomstick with his abilities, and I'd still be like, ah, oh, whatever. Seems seems yeah. pretty good. <laughs> seems like a good guy. So, yeah. Um, Echo, hopefully he comes up soon. We can get to test him out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, the other piece... I have a bunch of stuff here to go over. Um, I wanted to mention that one of the other things that I was actually really excited about is that Magicka 2 releases on May 26th, and that is a couple of days before we actually get out of school. Um, oh, that's May that's awesome. Yeah, May so, 26th is good. So, um, basically, I had a lot of fun with Magicka, not only multiplayer, but I'm actually replaying it right now, because it's one of the games that I can play offline when I don't have any internet which is important because for Study all. yeah <laughs> yeah we're, i'm not i'll just let that hang in the air for a second yeah but um magic is super fun and like i'm actually getting really good at it right now so like i'm excited to go back into multiplayer with a bunch of friends and like fuck around it's gonna be yeah. great um they did have like a youtube teaser i don't know if you've seen it yeah, um, I'm watching it but, right now. yeah it was one of those kind of videos where they kind of, with the the game kind of makes fun of itself yeah but like previously i like replaying magica i never noticed how many like references they had um like i only i only recently today when i was replaying it where um you're taking on this orc like war leader and um once he he he's talking to the captain of the army and he's saying like oh my orcs have now uh encompassed your town and are burning it down or whatever and the captain of the army is like cuz his the orc's name is Khan so the captain of the army yeah, is like yeah. Khan yeah. and i was like that's a star trek reference i didn't get yep. that before so i this don't know game... This game is clearly written by a bunch of nerds who like really wanted to throw in jokes, and it's so good. Like that's that's not me bashing it at all. Like this game yeah. is is uh it's really funny. Very tongue in cheek. It you know it's not like like no one like from the start they're like we're not taking this seriously, so no one else should take this seriously, and that's good. That's what we need in yeah. some games. Like not every game has to be you know a Skyrim or an Assassin's Creed where it's real serious and. No, well, this oh, this stuff. isn't this isn't a triple A title by any means. It's just yeah, that too. It's like super fun. But even um, even like you know, Super Meat Boy is is another indie game that is kind of you know, it's it's got a little serious vibe. Well, I don't know. Indie games are weird. They have they have uh, they're they're their own genre. Yeah. Um, interesting fact though, I'm actually looking at Steam right now. You can pre-purchase Magicka Two for fifteen dollars. Oh, that's that's, that's pretty amazing. Good. That's pretty good. I was expecting thirty dollars because Magicka One right now at full price is ten dollars. Oh, so is it? like yeah. So I mean that was a lot less than I'm expecting. And I don't remember how much um, I paid for it. Just from just from the video, uh, what I could tell is that they made like some improvements. So like you can now see your characters sort of, um, 
vision, for lack of a better word, where like if you were to cast like a like a triple S beam. Yeah. Um. There's a line like of sight. That beam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a line of sight indicator, which is, uh, like awesome because now you won't blow each other up every five seconds. It's pretty. But cool. that's also like. That that removes the anonymity to blowing each other up, right? Yeah. You could be like, "Oh, it's I'm sorry, it was an accident," <laughs> but in reality, you just want to blow your friend up. I don't so, know. I mean, this game, this this game is still gonna be so much fun. Yeah. Like, totally. I'm still gonna kill all my friends. So. Uh, let me actually show this. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, uh -oh. so this is what I'm talking about. See this? Um, I'm on the Magic Two trailer, and I'm just showing these. This like some footage of it not footage but like okay. a picture a still um this beam right here will tell you like where you're aiming um and like i'm like i don't know one one thing one of the things that i just freaking love about magica and i think this is like a common thing is that you feel so free like you have these eight spells that you can combine in any way that you want. And, like, of course, there are more powerful ones than others. But, like, once you get to know, like, five or six really good ones, then you start mishmashing them. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, like, I just love just it's, experimenting with that crap. And it's also on the spot you have to do it. It's, yeah. uh, it kind of pressures you to just, like, press keys and see what happens. Yeah. Which is, this. it's fun. Like, it's not like that's a bad thing at all. It's It's great. And I hope that they have like, really overpowered spells in Magicka 2, as they did in Magicka, because only today, um, as I was playing it, I actually learned the spell for Thunderbolt, and oh, yeah. Thunderbolt does uh, what is it? so it's much like damage. A... It it does, it's, it's FQ ASA. Oh, yeah. So, that does 5,000 damage. Now, if, if you get... Uh, enemies wet either with um either with a dq like almost projectile or you oh. or you make like a shield of water rocks um that that doubles or even triples the thunderbolt damage now i yeah. also <laughs> i also learned the spell for thunderstorm which i would never recommend using because <laughs> essentially what that uh, maybe in multiplayer you you could get away with it but essentially what it does is it creates a thunderstorm where everybody is wet and it will just rain um thunderbolts like maybe oh 15 God. 15 to 20 different thunderbolts on all <laughs> not all of the enemies but like random enemies within the area and most of the time they will kill you like yeah. most of the time they hit you so that's the bad thing <laughs> that was always fun like um we used to always just like like dylan and i used to play this game a lot i'm pretty sure dylan has this game uh because i remember playing it with him but I... we used to just uh we used to just spam qfasa space and see who could do it first and <laughs> kill each other <laughs> it was a lot of fun like literally you could do that for like 10 15 minutes of your time and you get nothing accomplished but that's part like, of the fun <laughs> but it's so yeah that's that's like fifty percent of the fun of the game is just dicking around. So yeah, it's so, great. Uh, that's that's awesome. I'm so excited for Magic Two. And it'd be cool like, to get a playthrough of it. Yeah. Um. And that was that was one thing that I want to mention too is that like I well I'm at least planning to do a playthrough. So um I mean here's the thing I could say let let us know if you want to see a playthrough in the comment section below. But I can already tell you that we're gonna do a playthrough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least that we should. So that's gonna be hopefully hilarious. And I think we're gonna play with with D um Dylan hopefully, or maybe I don't know, Clayton or somebody. I don't know, somebody funny. Yeah. It'll be fun you know to it. to get really angry when you kill them multiple times. You know, I remember playing that too, what um you could because okay, when you resurrect somebody, you know the order in which they can resurrect so yeah. i remember like if you make friends with a certain person and you're in a four player match you can kill the other two you you can kill everybody and then like resurrect people to the point where your friend is alive and the other two are dead so like you can yep. you can sort of keep your friends dead which is kind of funny too i don't know it's just fun shit yeah um all right so can i talk about assassin's creed yes okay so I did not. You showed me this, so but I wanted to introduce it because um, they released a, an Assassin's Creed Syndicate gameplay walkthrough, where uh, this kind of odd uh, German slash Scandinavian accent guy uh, is really excited about carriages. <laughs> he goes through. 
he like so he's like uh uh, you could I don't I don't want to imitate the accent because I'm gonna be horrible at it. But basically, he's like, uh, yeah. So you can uh, you can get in these carriages and uh, you could you could like hide in them and you can run people over and it's way <laughs> faster than horses and everything else you can do with carriages. And it's like you just listed everything that you yeah. can do with that carriage. <laughs> what else? Like he he's very explicit about like do, like saying everything you can do. Like oh. It's so cool. Like, what else could you do with that carriage besides going fast, like, what are you gonna running do, people over, up? and hiding in it? Yeah, like, what? Whatever. So, so that's, that's I just was... About... Go ahead. Yeah, it's like three minutes or something. Uh, a minute it's, and a half or it's, I think, two minutes. It's, the minute and a half mark of yeah. uh, the YouTube video is called Assassin's Creed Syndicate Gameplay Walkthrough. Yeah, he go, he says carriage carriages is what he says. Uh, will change how you play Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and it's like really like I don't think so. This game no. is the same as every other game. Not that that's bad, but it's a little bad, right? Like, like we we all have played this game. We all know exactly what this new game is gonna be. Yeah. Uh, which which you know I'm still maybe gonna play it, but um I'm still like you know. Like you don't don't try and convince us that this is like revolutionary. No. That this no. kind like this they're trying they're trying to say that like carriages is the new boats from Assassin's Creed Four. It's yeah. like there's no way. No. There's no way that's the case. You're not gonna do like missions that you can only do in carriages. Like Oh, I bet I like bet there will be the some, linear story. I bet there will be some cha uh, carriage chase mission that you're gonna be no, stuck in the stupid course. chariot. Oh, totally, chasing somebody because they're like ha 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 look at our new vehicle system i bet honestly i bet that's going to be a third of the missions is you're going to be in the carriages that's because funny. they're so excited but what i'm saying is like the the boats from assassin's creed 4 was like a whole nother level to the game and this is not that this is not like another like exploration thing like you're still like you can't you can't get out of the boats and do stuff yeah. You can get out of the carriage and do the same thing you could do in the carriage. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, vehicles don't add anything to the Assassin's Creed experience. Not really. I don't think. Not really. Um, but otherwise, this game is set in, I believe it's, like, mid-1800s Britain, I want to say. Mid yeah, something sounds like right. That. Um, and, okay, so here's the thing. Like, the trailer looks good. Mm -hmm. um, but first of all, I would I would say that... This this better not be another Assassin's Creed Unity. First of all, that that goes without saying almost. But I think like this to me looks just like another installment in the Assassin's Creed series. Like it's, like they didn't. It's like they didn't even change the um. What do you call that? The the aesthetics. Well, kind of. What do you bit. call it? There's it's um the, it's a code term. The engine. God. Yeah. So dumb. Uh, yeah, they didn't. Ch it's like they dead. They haven't changed the engine since Brotherhood. Like, like that. The, like, they haven't revamped it at all. It's the same thing. The graphics might be a little bit like that's what it feels like. It just looks. Like, it looks the same. Maybe they changed the lighting a little bit because it's in London. Like that's it. Yeah, it it's... looks. It looks like more of the same. And I mean, if you're a hardcore Assassin's Creed fan, that's fine. Good for yeah. you. You you get more Assassin's Creed. But I don't know if this is like. It's going to be a good game, or I mean, ho hopefully it'll be a good game anyway, but even if it is a good game, like, I don't know if I want to pay $60 for the same experience nope. again. Honestly, you know what I should, I think Ubisoft should do is just drop Assassin's Creed, get a new IP, make, make a better game, make a different game. I don't care what it is, but, like, this is, like, what, the eighth installment of this game? I don't know, I didn't do my math, but it's... It's a, it's a lot of games that were we all were kind of done by Brotherhood. Yeah. So um so yeah, oh, but well. anyway, um the the news portion of this was that um it's it's been announced, some footage has been released and that was sort of what I was showing. Um and it's basically in Victoria, London. So if you're into Britain and all that crap, then you know, this is the game for you. <laughs> But um, overall, I would say that like most people are sort of burnt out on the series a little bit. Uh huh. Unless you're just looking, you know, I don't know. 
maybe some people enjoy more of the AC, more of the AC experience. I uh, I'm just kind of reading the comments on this PC Mag um, or PC Gamer article, and a lot of them are negative. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. So, you know, which like I hate. Like, the, honestly, I'm sure it's a good game, but everyone is just burnt out. Like, this guy... <laughs> I'm not going to read that. Never mind. Uh, they're just, you know, people are people are becoming quite salty. And honestly, it might just be because it's an easy target. <laughs> but um, the people are just done. I, I would assume that most people are just kind of ready to be done. So. Yeah, so this guy says... Um... These Assassin's Creed games are popping up more often than than PC than <laughs> PC gamer GTA Five mod articles, <laughs> which that's so true. Like so many, there there are so many articles on PC Gamer of just like, hey, look at this GTA Five mod. It's like, wow, must yeah. be a slow news week if you really yep. have to show off a mod for. News. I hate that that like that's the <laughs> like, the, yeah, we could talk about where media is going for hours but i feel like that's because they're kind of pressured to post a million and one things a day oh yeah i mean i'm so, not like i'm not complaining i just find it amusing that like, yeah so it much, is kind of so much kind of, of funny. their like <clears throat> i don't know <clears throat> um okay so that's pretty much that um the other thing as long as we're talking about upcoming games um i wanted to show this i don't know if i want to show the video but um, a new video has come out of um, somebody playing the Overwatch character Zenyatta for mm. like eight minutes, I think it's like, something like that. And basically, I know we've talked about Overwatch before, but um, I am super excited for Overwatch. And um, this video was interesting to me more because it's something pl it's, it's somebody playing a character properly. Like, mm -hmm. in in a lot of the feature videos, or at least a lot of the example videos where, like, they literally just show what the champion does, um, this, this video is of, like, somebody who knows what they're doing and has somewhat mastered this champion compared to the other videos of, like, oh, I'm, like, basically just bots or people just, um, yeah. like, walking around as the champion, like, showing off their abilities. Um, I've seen some, like, a lot of Overwatch gameplay, and, like, a lot of, being the game is obviously so new, um, a lot of the people are, like, really bad, but mm -hmm. this guy, like, he has, like, a five kill streak, and, um, this is super cool. I don't know, I'm, I'm super excited about Overwatch, and I will play the shit out of it once it comes out. Yeah, honestly, um, I, it's, it, it kinda is not true for me to say this, but, um, because of Diablo, but Blizzard has not made a bad game um really ever like yeah yeah they're like I they would... they know what they're doing yeah. they know that they like even though this is kind of new territory for them they know that they need to make a good game because they have to hold a high standard for themselves which i think they will i i'm i have no i have no doubt that they will make a good game and i have complete faith in them because i already from what i've seen it looks great so but it, you know it just I love Blizzard because they are they're always good at what they do. Yeah, and I mean the reason that Blizzard is so successful, I think, is because they take like a concept and they um or a gaming concept anyway, and they either improve upon it or sort of refresh that sort of genre of game. Mm -hmm. For example, let's take um okay, well World of Warcraft is a good example because they basically invented. Yeah, the, they invented the, World the of MMO. Warcraft in, uh, well, genre. I don't know if they, I don't know if they invented the MMO. But like, okay, so take, take um, Hearthstone for example. Hearthstone is a collectible card game that hasn't, um, like, there's there's Magic the Gathering online and ma like Magic the Gathering games of like duels of the planeswalkers and stuff like that. But, like, the collectible card game community hasn't seen a good, like, a really good online presence since Hearthstone, at least yeah. as far as I'm aware. So, like, Blizzard sort of made, like, refresh that genre and, and sort of saw what Magic Gathering Online was trying to do and made it made it a thing, essentially. Yeah, and made it better. So, And they weren't, it's... like, they, there's, um, it, it would have been hard for Magic to do uh, what they're doing I think because there's so many elements to the game um and they i think that 
Blizzard made a good call when they kind of dumbed it down a little bit. Yes, um, yes. And I think especially because they were planning from the beginning to go to tablets. Um, and I, they, I don't know, they didn't talk about phones that much, and all of a sudden it came out. Like, I had no clue that they were going to do a phone version. But they they kind of built it around that, which is which is why it's very successful um, and why they're, I mean the fact that it's so simple is part of its success like right. it's it makes it a good game yeah i mean we've we've seen in our school anyway once once hearthstone hit phones like literally not literally everybody Blew up. but like so many people just just picked up the game and started playing and like that's mo- that's like, how hearthstone excels like that's which is yeah that's why because mobile sorry it's Go. i mean that's like that's that's why that's how where it succeeds where magic hasn't is because mm-hmm. hearthstone is so easy to just pick up and play yeah um and i think that that mobile gaming is such a huge market and that that genre was waiting to come about yeah. um because there were i guarantee there were no good card games besides like texas hold'em on the iphone um before hearthstone came out like I'm sure there's a couple that a couple of you guys are probably like I I played this and it was all right but like Hearthstone probably is gonna dominate that that genre yeah um, which is great because they're gonna make a lot of money <laughs> and um, yeah <laughs> pretty much but um, I also wanted to make the comparison too like take Overwatch right it's it's both and Im- maybe you could argue an improvement upon but it's a refreshing game in the sort of crazy zany fps world its predecessor and like people don't want to make the comparison to tf2 but it's there nonetheless like tf2 is sort of the predecessor of this game and like what like tf2 has been around since 2007 or 2008 or something like that maybe even 2009 but like this is finally like a 2015 to 2016 new version of a game like that and like people are just waiting for this sort of new genre of game do you think uh, a team fortress 3 will come out in in uh in uh, the future i don't because yeah, um, i wouldn't think so if if it it, it honestly would have come out already yeah um between oh, they would have announced it at least because overwatch yeah. is, is is getting a lot of traction yeah and like that's that's why i'm so excited for overwatch is because i want that same sort of tf2 crazy wacky shooter yeah. like like a uh, character specialization type of shooter um again yeah. and um i uh, forgot what i was saying no um i was i was gonna make the comparison to uh what was the game that we all played for like a good week um a week yeah it was not long it was a free-to-play game and you could buy uh like uh aesthetic stuff but you made a video on it once too uh it was it was a shooter and it was really goofy oh what was it let me look it up was I it cartoony it. what do you yeah it was very cartoony oh. Um, um, I don't know what you could be talking about. Oh, God, um, oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Uh, it's, it's, it's the one where, um, they have the twerking taunt. Yep. <laughs> That's really gross. If you play the, if you play the, the lady. Oh, what is this called? I got to I gotta do my research on this now. Um, it's not war. No, Warframe was not it. No, it not. Um... Ah, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go through my through my video manager until I find this. It was. It's uh, not like it's, it's a new it, game. It, it like wasn't it, over. It's not old. It's not uh, over. Loadout. 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 There we go. <laughs> Um, I wanted to make the comparison to that, but I don't think it's the same. It looks... Um, it's No, it's it's way more balanced and way more competitive than Loda. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's, I think, why it's so hard for people to jump in games like that. Uh, it's because balancing is harder than you think. Um, yeah. And World of Warcraft, or Blizzard, first of all, I could talk about Blizzard balancing issues for weeks. But, Hearthstone needs some balancing right now. Yeah, the reason they do that, and I, I'm a firm believer of this, and this might be a conspiracy theory, but damn it, it's true. Um, 
they want you to buy things. That is like oh, the, you're this this argument again. Yeah, like they they want like this may not be the case for World of Warcraft, but they want like they want a little bit of disbalance for you to like be pissed and like I don't know, cause like think about it. If you if you have all paladin cards and you have no other cards, right? You disenchanted everything that you don't need um, from like other classes, and now paladin sucks. Not the case, but what if that happened? Now you're gonna go buy more cards and be like, hey, I'm gonna go play the new best class. I feel like that's yeah. like they try to do, and that, I mean, League does that too. Whenever they come out with a new champion, it's really OP, except for uh, Bard, but and a couple others, but. You know my point, like that everyone wants to try out the really OP champion because they're OP and they want to win. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And like the World of Warcraft, think about that. They want you to buy more time, so you you have to waste the time leveling up a character um, that's new and and improved and good. And honestly, I don't even care. Like, it's I've I've had to deal with it for however long I play World of Warcraft, and I enjoy it because I'm an ADD person, so. And that's that's self-diagnosed. It's not like I'm actually. No, <laughs> you're not medically diagnosed uh, with ADD. Yeah. So, but like I I get bored with my character pretty easily. I've had I stuck with my main for a while, but like as far as like secondary characters, I get kind of bored with them quick. So um, when one becomes really overpowered, I'm like I want to play that. I'm gonna level up my mage and get it really high because mages are really overpowered right now. So. You know. <sighs> As much as I don't want to believe that theory, it, it does have some validity, I think. Pretty sound. Some accuracy. I hate it. Because, like... <sighs> like, it's weird. Yeah, that, I mean, it it makes a lot of sense, like... <sighs> but honestly, no. don't you think a game that was perfectly balanced would be boring? No. You don't? Because, T like... because TF2 is almost perfectly balanced, and it's... I mean, there's a lot of people with over a thousand hours in it. Yeah. Including myself. But that's that's a game like I think it's different for World of Warcraft and a little bit a little bit different for Hearthstone. Um, because um Hearthstone it's easy to balance, I think. Yeah, it would be easy to balance. Like if you honestly, if like... you spent a month playing Hearthstone, you would realize what cards are overpowered and you would be like, Oh, Doctor Boom. Everybody calls him Dr. Balance. Let's let's increase his mana cost okay. by two. Like, you literally change the... Like, balancing... All you need to do to balance cards in Hearthstone is change the mana cost of the cards. That's all yeah. you need to do. But they also, like... I think the struggle they have is, like, would you play on nine cost Dr. Boom? Like, would you put that in your deck? The problem that they have to think about is, like... um we we don't want cards to become obsolete, right? It's gonna happen. It's pretty much inevitable for some cards, but we want the majority of the cards to be um, still played. So I don't I don't know. Yeah, but okay, like it's why, it's you, I don't I don't know if we're like smart like like I don't know if we've had enough experience to talk about like I I understand that um, I don't know. We've it's, had it's this discussion. Like, okay, yeah. add add up the value of a card's effects. Okay, you you have standards. Dark bomb is a two cost deal three damage. Okay, now that doesn't necessarily yep. scale all the way. Um, in in terms of like, you have like a twelve cost deal fucking sixteen damage. That's yeah, not that's physically not possible to do. But anyway, um, so it's 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 a two to three ratio. Mage, Mage's Fireball is a 2 to 3 ratio. So, so you think, okay, a 2 to 3 ratio in terms of mana cost to um, damage dealt is about a good um, ratio. So, like, if you, if, if Blizzard were to introduce a card that is, okay, um, 3 mana, uh, I don't know, 3 mana cost deal 7 damage. Like, somebody would obviously be, be comparing the cards and be like, wait a minute, this isn't that balanced. Yeah. It's this, it's almost the same thing, only a little bit more complicated with creatures. Doctor, yeah. Doctor Boom, you add up the value, okay? You have a 7-7 seven, seven for 7, okay, that's already War Golem right there. Now, yeah. you have two Boom Bots that explode and deal damage to random enemies, okay? To, um, each boombot is probably worth about one mana because if you if you think of Mad Bomber, he does about the same thing, something like that. Anyway, so mm -hmm. alone, alone, just like 
the bodies on the board are worth um, nine mana. You know, and like yeah. the fact that they're mechs, okay, that's also valuable. So yeah. they're the bodies on the board and their mechs giving you mech synergy is is worth more mana than seven. Like, yeah, that's why I like you, I don't know. But also like like the thing that you also had to take into account, which does not account for the majority of what you're talking about. I totally agree with you for the most part, but like kit, like like mages we've talked about this have um, very overpowered cards just in general. The flame strike, fireballs, all that stuff. Um, but like, I think if you look at like, well, maybe not. I don't know. It's it's hard because we don't have sheer raw data. Like, we can't look and see the win rate of every. We can look and see the win rate of like tournaments you can, and stuff you like can that. Look at, you can look at the the statistics of arena drafts. Yeah. That's um I actually saw like a Reddit post yesterday where this guy posted about he he did literally a hundred arena matches with each individual hero. Oh my god. And like I don't know how much data he recorded, but like he had like win percentages and stuff and he was he was giving out he was saying like okay, for example, like never play warrior in arena because like you're saying, you have to take into account a kit. Warrior has yep. the worst hero power in the game in in arena because his hero power only is good when it synergizes with with his class cards that have yeah. that deal with armor. So yeah. he was like, okay, never pick warrior. But um like right, you you do have to look at kit synergy, but on a certain level, I think like synergy only counts for so much and you you still have mm -hmm. to look at the at the direct value of the card that you're getting essentially. Yeah. I don't know. And yeah, th th and that, that was kind of it comes back to my point in the beginning like they probably know how to balance this, right? They've been doing this for years. They know what for uh, is balanced one and, a half and what's years. not. Yeah, and just for this game, they've been balancing World of Warcraft for you know almost ten years. Oh, ten years, ten years, uh, almost eleven years. Um, and they've been balancing StarCraft for more than that. Like they they know what they're doing, but I think that they just want to make money, which. It sucks, and it you know it's the it's the screws and nails of their company, like any other company. But it it just you know it again it's kind of that ex exploitation, like it's unconscious exploitation. Not a lot of people, I don't think, like look at this and say, "Oh, I'm paying another dollar," which maybe is good, right? Like maybe that's better than milking everybody for their money. Is doing it in a subconscious level where you say, "Okay, we're gonna do this, and you're not gonna notice it." And that's probably better for our games because um, you're not going to, you know, bitch and moan. Which people still do about balancing issues, but, like, that's that's different. Like, you're not... It's more of just, like, I'm pissed because I lost in one instance versus I'm pissed because I lost my money. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I get that, you know, companies have to make money somehow, and I guess this is better than you know, making you buy DLC, but they also make you spend $15 a month and buy an expansion every two years. So, I don't know. Yeah, and... Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> I hate I hate that we have to spend a bunch of money, but it's, it is the world yeah. that we live in. Um, and, well, yeah. And, like, they wonder. Like, people wonder why people pirate games. It's like... Yeah. Cause, here's cause here's the thing. The money. Here's the thing. I have I have X amount of money to spend on games per month that I don't necessarily know about. But let's say let's say this number is like a hundred twenty dollars, right? I'm going to spend you know maybe um, you know fifteen dollars on Magicka two, and then maybe um, I might buy like sixty dollars worth of Hearthstone cards. Once that money runs out, like I'm not like I'm not going to start forking over more money for this yeah. stupid like i don't know i feel uh, but the it's... thing is some people will some people will be impulsive and be like hey what's 15 dollars?" and then it adds up and they're like spend two thousand dollars in two months and they're like fuck yeah what have I so done? it's like i'm not i'm not going to pay your like five dollar dlc it's like no i'd rather yeah i'd rather have something meaningful that i'm spending on like i'm not like i'm not my my you know these micro purchases are not going to be very uh, satisfying for me. So, like, yeah. I'd rather just save this money. That's the like, thing. It like, is, but the it thing is, is, I don't want to give up the gaming experience. So I'm just going to pirate the game anyway. It's like, yeah. 
That's the thing is microtransactions are less satisfying. They're satisfying for less time. Like they may uh, like you know what I mean? Because then you you bought like, this and you're like, yeah, it might be. And this would be interesting to bring up to, uh, because like. Like we we are less satisfied with a little bit, um, versus like buying a full game, because you know you're gonna sink twenty hours into that game. Yeah. You know you're gonna have so much fun. But if you buy like you know gems in Clash of Clans, you buy two walls or whatever the fuck it was, and then now you're like, okay, there it is. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you, like you, you can see those two walls, and it's a physical thing, and you can you can look at it and say, I did that with my real money. But that's not as satisfying as you being like, I spent 20 hours grinding to play through this game and understand. And it is different. I'm comparing two different genres, but you understand the point. Yeah, yeah. I totally get it. Um, so, also, speaking of uh, Blizzard, um, there was this article that you said that I also looked at. Blizzard banned a hundred thousand World of Warcraft accounts. That is insane. Yeah, um, and unfortunately, only for six months. Oh, <laughs> only for six months. Yeah, it says okay. for a six months period. Oh, wait, well, maybe that was they've been banning for a six month period. But it says unleashes its ban ever again. This time, kicking out more than a hundred thousand World of Warcraft players for a six month period. I don't know. Okay. So, yeah, it says the suspensions will last for six months and affect more than 100,000 cats. Yeah. Um, I wonder if those, like, with their whole gold system and where they sort of made it free to play, kind of, sort of, um, I wonder if they only, if they weren't permabans because they're still making money off of these accounts that have, like, paid. Like, how does that work exactly? Like, could, do, you, do you not pay for your account if it's banned? You're just like, well, I'm banned. I'm going to stop paying. Or are you, like, forced to pay for those six months? still um no you don't i don't think you have to pay for those six months okay um, so it's not okay but yeah no but that, you're not allowed to play which is what people are pissed yeah. about um so like basically the reason that they banned these these accounts were because um uh, okay, so the quote here is, We've recently taken action against a large number of World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft accounts that were found to be using third-party programs that automate gameplay, known as bots. Uh, mm -hmm. We're committed to providing an equal and fair playing field for everyone in World of Warcraft, and we'll continue to take action against those found in violation of our terms of use. Cheating of any form will not be tolerated. So, like, basically... That's cool that they're, like, that they're banning people for essentially cheating. Um, because mm -hmm. it... it to me, it sounds like World of Warcraft is a huge grind fest. It's just, like, whether you're going to, you know, some people might just bot through it while they go to work or something. Yeah. Um, so it's good that they're knocking, that they're cracking down on cheating. But, like, this to me is, is more of a message of, like, holy crap, how, how, like, not, not to insult it, but how boring must this game be? <laughs> that people get bots to grind and maybe maybe yeah. it's more like a monetary thing in terms of like grinding to get gear and stuff or i don't even it, know what no, the system it's is. not even that so like it says uh they have been banned in pvp so it's not necessarily that you're you're grinding to go get you know ore or herbs or you know like do quests you're like grinding to win like you're trying you're grinding to win against people who are actually trying and that's kind of the 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 why they're kind of putting it the, their fist down is because um, people like maybe they are grinding to get gear, but they're also like people like this guy said, uh, botting is defined as automation of any action, not just character movement. So if you if you just have um, a bot that um, even if you're playing, even if you're sitting there, uh, going towards it, but a bot that automatically goes through your rotation. So all you have to do is move and right click then that I under, I totally understand. And that, that is like, that's just cheating. That's just straight cheating. But, um, like if you're just trying to grind out gear, I don't know. Like, like yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's they want it to be fair. Like if you're just like maybe you're not even winning. You're just trying to sit and go through battlegrounds and just sit there and right click and die. And you're just trying to get you know the honor points slowly but surely. Um, 
and or maybe you're just grinding to win or you're bonding to win. But either way, I think they just want to keep it even. Like it's not fun if you're losing to someone who's cheating, and it's also not fun if you're winning to someone who's just not there. Yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, I don't know what I. I don't know what the point of this news article is, or I mean, bringing it up other than it's just kind to of, say that like it's interesting to talk about. Yeah, I don't know. And it happened. That's a lot of accounts. Like, though, like this guy points 000? out that that's and a they've lot. lot like they're at an all time low of subscriptions too, which so a hundred thousand is a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like they said, they have a user base of seven point one million, which is is low. They were they were complaining when they had like eight million subscribers. It's a ton of money, so, man. That is a ton of money, that, but it's also a ton of money to 15 million. 15. Yeah, it's a lot. Or I'm sorry, 15 but they million. They also, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it's a lot of money to keep these servers up and keep people like they have to pay. Like, I'm sure they have thousands of people uh, staffed just to like fix people's problems. So, um, you know, they have to spend a lot of money, but they're also probably making like I'm sure the CEO is making you know seven seven figures. Oh yeah. Um, all right, so I, like, did you want to do maybe one more thing and then wrap up? Because we're at 50, 52 minutes now. Sure. I also, my internet, I think, is being trashy, so. All right. Well, I mean, we, we can wrap up now if you want. I'm cool with that. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about Tom Clancy's The Division? Uh, sure. Okay. So, um, recently... May 11th, so that was three days ago, uh, The Division was announced to have been delayed to 2016. Previously, mm -hmm. I think it was announced to come out in the fall, although that's just my guess. Um, and let me see here. It was during Ubisoft's uh, fiscal year 2015 earnings presentation. So that was... Is that? It's it says it states rather blithely that the highly anticipated open world MMORPG will be released in the fourth quarter of its 2016 fiscal year. So that's fourth quarter 2016. That's like yeah. two years. No, that's no, that's one and a half years. Yeah. That's um, I mean that's a while. <laughs> yeah. But I mean and again, it's a, it's it kind of goes back to this GTA 5 delay. I'm I just want them to make this game good because it looks awesome. Um, yeah, it does. So. Um, I think the little, was, was it like a two to three minute teaser that they showed on YouTube? I don't know if it was a teaser, just like even a gameplay video, but like it looked amazing. It was the video with with the guy who like everybody's making a big fuss about how he shut the police car door as he like walked by or something like that received a bunch of unnecessary yeah. attention. I don't know. Um, but this game, according to this PC Gamer article, it... It classifies the game as an open world MMORPG, which I didn't actually know that it is supposedly an M an MMORPG. I thought it was just a third person shooter. To be honest. Yeah, I kind of did too. I don't know. I've heard a lot of things about it. Uh, back when I first heard about it, it was last year, so it was a while ago. Um, and I mean, an MMO an MMO like this sounds awesome because every other MMO we have is the same thing. It's just a fantasy MMO or like. You know, we have Planet Side 2, which, you know, people love, and, you know, there's there's other MMOs, but point being, uh, this looks this looks awesome, and I want a shooter MMO. That would be so cool. A third-person shooter, yeah. yeah. Especially with, like, th this kind of, like, I want a linear, like, so Tom Clancy The Division is, is sort of a spy shooter, right? Like, Tom Clancy games are sort of like, it's a you're a CIA agent. Yeah. yeah, so it's a stealthy kind of... That sounds awesome. Yeah. I want that in my life. I, d I cannot I cannot believe that this is an MMORPG. Cuz like okay, here let me let me add this screen really quick. Um in the video that they released, it was literally like a third person shooter. Like yeah. I don't get how like this is this literally is a third person shooter. This is not an MMO at all. I don't know how they can get away they from got, an MMO. They got, I mean, honestly, you can make anything an MMO, you just add people, right? Like, the I'm, MMO doesn't... Uh, like, the MMO, the model right now is so is so definitive, and, like, you have to have 
like uh, you start out with a class and it has to be an RPG. Like you could you could literally do anything. You could just you just just in an open world and you do missions and there's just people everywhere. I don't know if I want that. Yeah, because... that's fair, and that's you know that's that's totally fair to say because also this is this is a game where like you want to feel like the hero, and if there's a million other heroes walking around, um, yeah. Like, like, know. okay, this, this looks like a super realistic game, and, like, I want, you know, at least in a campaign like this, I want to be, like, immersed in the story, right? And I don't want some, some, like, uh, Banana Joe 69, like, teabagging yeah. me in, as, as I'm trying to, like, snipe this guy out of a building, like, yeah, this is so stupid. I know. I don't want this to be an MMO, but whatever. We'll see how it turns out. It might, it may be something similar to, you might just be calling it an MMO. Like it might, it might be sort of like Grand Theft Auto Five, where uh, you just are in a lobby, uh, like, and there's a, a decent amount of people, and then you just, or maybe not a lobby, but like you just join a server or something like that, and there's there's not a million people there, but maybe there's you know, like, thirty, twenty. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, I, I just it looks so good, and I just I want it to be good. And it is amazing. If it's graphics. not good, I'm gonna throw a hissy fit. It has amazing graphics. Yeah. Um, and just like it's smooth, it just like the the combat, the movement, everything is just smooth. Yes. Um. So yeah, that's uh. Point being, though, it is delayed to quarter four of twenty sixteen. Still a long way off, year and a half. So yeah, I guess we get to look forward to that in a year and a half. I don't know if we'll remember this game in a year and a half because actually, if I remember right, wasn't this game announced like two years ago at E three? Yeah. It was a long time ago. It was they, a like, long put time out, ago. They put yeah, two thousand fourteen E three was this gameplay video that I'm watching. Um, so that's about when they kind of started talking about it. They maybe announced it a while ago, but they started doing gameplay videos. I mean, recently, or not, not recently, but closer to today's date. All right. So, um, I guess we can wrap up there. Sounds good. All right. Thank you guys for watching as always. Um, feel free to leave a rating on the video if you enjoyed it. And uh, feel free to subscribe and stuff. You can find Eric on um, Twitter at Eric W. Jacobson. Go check him out. He posts some, posts a bunch of comedy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, all right, that was it. Uh, I'll see you guys okay. later. Have a good one.